My name is Anthony. I work here on the trade desk at Tasty Trade. Joining me today, we have Mark, Christian, and David from the trade desk. They'll be here to assist with any questions you may have throughout the demo today. And uh, just before we get started here, I did want to preface this by saying that everything you see today is for example purposes only, and none of it is meant to be treated as trading advice. Again, everything you see today is for example purposes only. All right, everyone, let's jump right into things. So this, what you're seeing right here, this is our desktop trading platform. Um, if you are trying to follow along on your side right now and your platform does not look like this, chances are you may be on our web-based platform. Um, so I'm sure Christian, uh, David, or Mark, if they haven't done so already, will drop a link in the chat for you to go ahead and download this desktop trading platform. doesn't take very long at all to download, only about two minutes. But just before we get started, so we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of dive right into things here. I'm going to show you all how, how quickly you can actually operate as an end user on the desktop trading platform. So the first few minutes of this demo are going to be quick. Uh, but don't worry, we are going to slow things down. I just want to give you all a taste of what it looks like when uh, when you're an end user on the on the platform here, just how quickly you can place trades and get out of them. So off the bat here, we're gonna start with a uh, we're gonna start with an option spread. So let's go ahead. We'll just do something on spy. Go ahead, type that in. We're in the trade tab here. Now let's say we want to go ahead and place a vertical spread here on spy. We'll go ahead and. Uh, sell the 46, seven, uh, 467s, buy the 466s. And then once we have our price set here at the bottom of the screen, uh, let's see, we'll just make sure we get filled. Go something closer to the natural, review and send, and boom, off goes your order. And just like that, as you all can see, the uh, trade was filled. Now I do have this right sidebar pulled up here. This is a, a very great tool, especially if you're looking to just do most of your trading on, on one screen without having to click around very much. As you can see on the right side here, we do have uh, some position details. So you'll see that 466, 467 spread I just filled on the right side here. If you're looking to close that out, you could just go ahead and left click on both of the legs here and then right click, choose close position. That will line up a closing order. And then just like that, adjust the price, review and send, and boom. You're filled and out of that trade all in a all in a matter of seconds. Any questions on that so far? Okay. So uh, now I'll, I'll show you all just how quickly you could trade stock from this, this page as well. So let's go ahead and uh, change the symbol here. We'll go with Ford for this example. Go ahead and type in F. If you're looking to line up a stock trade at the top of your platform here, all you have to do is click on the bid or the ask price. Um, just so you're all aware, any bid or ask that you see on the platform is live. So for example, um, in our left side of the screen here, we have Ford in our watch list. We have a bid and ask over here. If we were to click on the bid or ask over there, it will line up in order to purchase shares of shares of Ford. As an example here, we'll click on the ask price and boom, at the bottom of our screen now, you'll notice we have an order lined up to purchase one share of Ford. Go ahead and adjust that price, review and send, send the order. And just like that, we got filled on our order. And then once again, in the right sidebar, you can see your position detail and you'll see we have one share of Ford there. We're also able to see any of our um, recent activity on the platform. That's located here toward the bottom of the right side panel. You'll notice me reference this um, a lot throughout the demo here today, because in my opinion, if you have this right sidebar popped out, um, and you're on the trade tab. I mean, you're you're realistically you're able to do everything you want from one screen. There's no clicking around. So it's a very very fast fast platform, um, and it allows for uh, quick quick uh, trades. Quick. It allows you to get quickly in and out. Um, all in a matter of clicks. You don't have to really do too much searching around the platform to see where your your filled order is. When you have this right sidebar popped out, it's all right there in front of your face. Sorry, everybody. I'm just catching up with a few of the chats here. Okay, someone said, can you switch to light mode? Yes, I'll show you that um, in a moment here. Um, and then also, yes, we will be coming back. Um, again, if a few of you feel that was a little quick there, we will be slowing things down. Um, and I will go more in depth on like the different order types, the order ticket, 
things along those lines um, where you can at, where you can see your trades, how you can trade from different modes. I will be covering all of that. I just wanted to give you all a taste, um, again, what an end user looks like here on the platform and how quickly you can actually navigate and place these trades. So now you'll also notice on this right sidebar here, we have a, uh, we have a little chart at the top. Um, you'll notice we, we are able to trade on charts on this platform. I'll show you that more later with some working orders, but you could see here in this little chart, it will show the one share of four that I purchased in the upper right corner of your screen. Another place where you could see this filled order is actually if you go to your positions tab itself, you'll notice as we click on positions, we have a sh our share of Ford displayed there. And then just to uh, give you all a, a little general like wayfinding um, on the platform. So your three most common panels or three most useful, in my opinion, are going to be, first of all, this left side panel here. Um, at the top, you'll notice we have our recent recently searched symbols. And underneath that, we have our watch lists. Um, with the watch list, this is all going to be based on anything that you have. Uh, if you've created your, your own watch list, you could access that here. We also have a lot of preset watch lists. So if you're looking to access those preset watch lists, what you can do is click on this drop down menu here. And you'll notice we have a list of different preset watch lists. So we have our tasty watch list. Um, we have Tony's and Tom's watch lists are listed, are listed here. So you could just click on those to access them and it will populate their watch list on the left side of your screen. We also have a sectors watch list. So let's say, oh, let's see, it looks like the drawing's kind of uh, getting in the way here. Let me go ahead and clear that for you all. So we have a sectors watch list. Um, let's say maybe you were interested in the energy sector. We go ahead, go to sectors, choose energy. And then we have a bunch of underlines that are listed here as well. So this is very fast for, um, especially if you have a preset watch list uh, for flipping back and forth between symbols, because with the watch list, if you want a symbol to populate across the screen, across your platform, all you need to do is left click on the symbol from the watch list. So for example, CVX, we'll go ahead and left click there. You'll notice now it populates at the top of the platform as well as the right side bar here. So that that is our live active symbol. So it's a very fast and very convenient way to uh, quickly flip back and forth between certain symbols. Right, let's take a look. Sorry, everybody, am I a little uh, little quiet here? I'll try to uh, try try to speak up here. Um, next, I want to shift our focus to the center panel here along the top of our screen. This is going to be our active symbol area. So this will uh, in this area, you can actually go ahead and search for any symbol that you want. So once again, in the upper left corner, if you type in, let's go with uh, Apple PL. You could go ahead and select that from the drop down menu and that will now populate Apple across your platform. You'll notice once again on the right sidebar populates there as well as the right sidebar and the active symbol area at the top of the page are both connected. Um, here at the top of the page, you get your bid, your ask, which you can queue up a stock order from. You also get to see the size and volume as well as the name of the company that you've searched. You get the full name listed here. And then finally, just before we, we get into breaking down uh, more trading on the platform. I do want to point out another uh, very useful tool on our platform. That is our right sidebar menu here, which I'm sure uh, most of you heard me reference at the beginning of the, the demo here. The right sidebar menu, in my opinion, can be it's it's extremely, extremely useful. Pretty much whatever you see on the main side or main center panel here, you kind of get a, a little mini version of it in this right sidebar menu. So it's very convenient um, when you're trying to see your, your active positions uh, while you're in the trade tab, you could use it like that. Or um, it's also very useful when we get into our uh, curve and analysis mode, the right sidebar, you're able to make um, adjustments to, to what you're seeing in the, in the curve mode from this right sidebar menu. We'll touch on that more later. And we also have our order chains feature, which we're, which we're definitely going to touch on. If you're someone who likes to roll options, that's a very, very useful one. All right, any, all right, everybody, just before we get into breaking down the trade ticket some more, um, are there any any questions that we have? Let's see. Christine, how can I see the stock description? Apple, again, that's in the upper right corner of your screen here. Go ahead and in the upper right corner of your screen, you have the company name listed right there.
right. Okay. So I see trading on charts has been a popular one. So I'll show you all what that looks like right now. If you go ahead and here, we'll get a, we'll go ahead and get a working order um, queued up here on our, our Ford shares. So let's go ahead and line up a closing order here. What you need to do from the positions tab is right click on your line that shows the shares that you own. Choose close position. This will bring up a closing order ticket. Oop, did you lose me? No, I'm still here. Okay. Sorry, everybody, the camera I'm looking at went out. Um, let's see. Is that better? Can you all, can you hear me a little bit better, everybody? Audio is fine. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and line up a closing order on those Ford shares that, that we bought earlier. So we've right-clicked on Ford, cho chosen close position. From here on our order ticket, we can go ahead and adjust our limit price using this limit price box here. And in this instance, we're going to go ahead and bump this down a little bit uh, just because I'm not looking to get filled just yet. So, or I'm sorry, we're going to go ahead and bump this up a little bit. I don't want to get filled just yet. So we'll throw it at $13. Actually, you know what? Let's go to 12, 10. And then we're going to send this as a limit order. Once we're satisfied with that, we go ahead and hit review and send, fire that order off. And you'll notice we have this working order that comes up. Once again, you could see that working order in the bottom right corner of your screen. If you have that right sidebar pulled out, um, you'll see that in the activity tab in the bottom right corner of your screen. Now to access this order on a chart, I'm sure you all can see it here in the, the small window up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and blow this up a little bit so you're able to uh, see it a little better. So we're going to at, click on the chart tab here. This is the uh, third icon underneath activity on the left side of your screen. Go ahead and click on that chart tab. This will bring up a chart for Ford. And then let's go ahead and adjust the y-axis here. Now you can see, so this gray box that you see here, this is our opening order. Uh, the order that we have working is denoted by this yellow box with the dotted lines. So if you're looking to make adjustments to this working order from the chart, you can do that simply by left clicking on it and you'll notice it highlights and you get a red X and then an up and down arrow. Once you left click and have everything highlighted, you're going to left click and hold to drag the order and you'll notice the price changes. And then when you have dragged it to a price that you're satisfied with, you go ahead and release and then that will cancel your previous order and you now have a new working order at the price at which you just dragged that that order to from the chart. Any questions so far? How can you hide the the watch list on the left pane? So unfortunately you can't hide the watch list on the left pane. You can you do have a little scroll bar here where you can make it um skinnier or wider, depending on your preference. But that left side, that left side watch list will remain uh, static. You're not, you're not able to remove that one. Is this being recorded? Yes, everybody, this demo is going to be recorded and it will be posted on our, uh, our YouTube channel tomorrow. Okay, how can you go ahead and cancel the order? Good question here, Scott. So to cancel the order, you can go ahead and once again, left click on that yellow box there. You can just click on this little tiny red X. Let me see if I could grab this just to make it easier to see for everybody. Um, you know what? I think if I click off, yeah, if I click off, it's going to go away. Um, okay, so what, what you can do is left click on that box. This little tiny red X here, if you go ahead and click on that, that will cancel the order. And you'll notice now that order had that working order has been canceled. And then again, everybody, I know we're uh, going, we've got started a little quick here with the demo. If you have any, any questions or wanted to learn more um, as you're going through the, the demo itself. So we touched on the, the right sidebar briefly, um, but Hey, let's say, you know, you wanted to learn more about it. I'm going to direct you all to this, uh, this little, question mark icon on the left side of your screen. This is actually, this will give you direct access to our help center where you can look up anything you want. I mean, we if if you see it on the play, platform, chances are there's a help center article about it or maybe even multiple articles about it. We have tons and tons of information on our help center. 
you go ahead and click on this, for example, this will direct you to our help center. And again, let's say you had some some questions about that right side sidebar menu, or you were curious about the other other uh, features that are offered in it. What you can do is go ahead and type in, let's see, right sidebar. There you go the very first option here at the top, go ahead and click on that. And now you have a whole help center article that goes over the right sidebar menu. Um, you have some videos, different different images on here. So this is very, very helpful. If you're in a pinch and you you're wanted to know more about something you're seeing on the platform, I strongly suggest using, using that help center. Our help center is phenomenal. And then let's go ahead and jump into uh, actually placing an options trade now. So once again, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and slow this down a little bit from where we started. We're going to go to the trade tab here. In the trade tab, your traditional options chain. And let me go ahead and actually collapse this right sidebar menu for right now so we have more room. Your traditional options chain can be accessed under our table trading mode at the top of the page. So you could go ahead and click on table. From here, you'll notice you get your traditional chain or your traditional um, expirations are displayed here. So we have the different ex expirations displayed for Ford. Those can be seen on the left side of your screen. And then down the center of your screen, if you're uh, not someone who trades based off of um, the expiration date itself and you, you're pretty much basing it off of days until expiration, we have those listed down the center of the column, uh, center of the page here. And then finally, on the right side of your page, you have implied volatility and expected move, which are displayed all the way on the right side of the page here. Now, in the options chain itself, let's go ahead and pop open one of the expirations. In the options chain itself, you have on the left side of your page are the calls that's denoted here at the top of the top of the blue bar. It says calls are on the left of the strikes, and then your puts are displayed on the right side here. And you'll also notice at the top of the page here, we have some different columns displayed. So you have your bid and ask, which are displayed for both the calls and the puts, which will be useful when selecting whether you're looking to go long or short the option. But outside of the bid and the ask, you have, in this case, I have two additional columns here. You can get up to four additional columns depending on screen size and resolution. Um, but these additional columns here, you'll notice they have these little, little circles next to them. That means they are customizable. So right now we have vo option volume displayed. So we'll see the volume on each of these each of these uh, options. But let's say maybe you were curious with the uh, what the delta was. So what you can do is left click on the header here, and this will bring up a menu. Um, from here you can select delta from the menu, and now we have all the deltas displayed. You'll notice that is both on the call side and the put side. So these columns will they'll mirror each other both on the call and put side as you adjust them. All right, everybody. And then if you're looking to line up an order here on these options, what you can do, let's say you're looking to uh, buy buy a call option or something along those lines. And let's use something, we'll use something other than Ford. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw Apple up there. So let's say you're looking to, uh, to purchase a call option or something along those lines on Apple. All you need to do is come to the left side here. Again, the calls are on the left side of the strikes and simply left click on the ask price next to the option that you're looking to buy. And that will line up in order for you to buy to open that call. As you can see in the bottom left corner of your screen here, you uh, we have an order queued up to buy the 202 and a half strike call. And then with this, uh, actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and turn this into a spread. So let's go ahead and sell. Uh, we'll move this further out here. And then we'll go ahead and sell the 202 and a half. Um, and now we have our call spread here. One thing I did want to point out to you all is that we do offer bracket orders on these on these spreads. So you're able to set both a uh, take profit and stop loss on these these option spreads, as well as single leg options. You're able to do it there. Um, you're able to set bracket orders on uh, shares of stock. And finally, you can also set bracket orders on outright futures contracts. Um, but for the one setting one up for the uh, option spread, all you need to do in the bottom left corner of your screen is click on this word that says bracket order, and you'll notice another window will pop up with our bracket order. 
on the left, we have our order entry starting point. So from here, you're able to adjust the starting order price. And then you can also set up the uh, clo close at profit target and the stop loss. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. We'll go ahead and bump this down to, we'll do 22 cents just to make sure we get a fill. And then uh, the close at profit, that's fine at 12 cents. If you're looking to adjust your, your stop, again, with the stops on spreads, you're only able to use a stop limit order. So you will not have access to a stop market order with stops on spread. So this will always be a stop limit. You'll have to set two prices. Um, we'll go ahead and bump our limit to 35 and we'll set our stop trigger go at 30. Once we're satisfied with the order, we'll go ahead and review and send, fire that order off. And you'll notice we got filled on the initial spread here. And now we have two more working orders. That's our take profit and stop loss order. Those can be seen in our positions tab. You'll notice if we click on Apple, we have our filled order at the top and then we have our two working orders. So if you're looking to uh, cancel those working orders, what you can do is right click from the positions tab and then click on cancel complex order. In this case, we'll go ahead and do it because I want to show you all uh, what it looks like when you roll a spread here on the Tasty Trade platform, and then that order, that great order chains feature that we offer as well. So let's go ahead and you know what? We'll just go ahead and roll this, uh, roll this spread we just went ahead and opened. If you left click on each of the legs, when you have a multi leg spread, you'll have to left click on both. Once both are highlighted, you go ahead and right click, and in this case, we'll go ahead and just roll the expirations. Let's roll this thing out to. Um, January. So we click on January there. And, oops, did I only have one leg selected? Go ahead and roll this out to uh, December 29th. You'll notice now in our bottom left corner of our screen, we have our closing orders and then also our new uh, positions that we're rolling to denoted as opening orders, sell to open, buy to open. Once we're satisfied with this, we'll go ahead and bump the price down, review and send fire that order off and it looks like we're waiting for a fill and there you go we ended up getting filled at 14 cents now you'll you all notice I just rolled that option um, so if you're someone who who rolls options and you're constantly tracking this on a spreadsheet uh, with the tasty trade platform we actually have a great tool that tracks it all for you that's going to be our order chains feature. So to access the order chains feature, if you take a look in the upper right corner of your screen, you'll notice we have this left facing arrow. This will once again pop out that right sidebar menu that we had open earlier. From this right sidebar menu, we're looking for this icon right here. This is going to be our order chains icon. So now we'll go ahead and click on order chains. From here, you'll notice we can now see our order chains from Apple for the last 30 days. Right now, we go. you can go all the way out to a year if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, we'll go ahead and keep it at 30 days. Our opening transaction is listed here. We uh, sold to open the 202 and a half strike call, bought to open the 205 strike call, at a, brought in a credit of 23 cents. And then you'll notice we have our rolling order here where we ended up rolling that position for an additional 14 cents of credit. And you'll now see at the top of the order chains, our average trade price is at 37 cents. So this tracks all credits or debits you've received from rolling um, on the right side of your, of your screen here using the order chains. You'll notice now that if you take that 14 cent credit plus that 23 cent credit, total net credit from all these rolls is going to be 37 cents. That's all tracked conveniently here for you on the right side of the page. Right, everybody. Something else I wanted to touch in, touch in more on now is going to be our uh, different trading modes that we offer, specifically our, our curve mode, uh, the curve analysis mode. So in this instance, if we wanted to go ahead and analyze what a uh, what a position on Apple would potentially look like, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and pull up a different ticker. In this case, we'll go with Tesla. Um, so let's say we've got a iron condor queued up here on Tesla. We'll go ahead with the 237 and a half, 232 and a half, and then we'll go sell the 257 by the 262 and a half. So we have your traditional iron condor queued up right there. And if you're curious to see what the profit and loss zones 
of this iron condor look like. To view those, what you can do is go to our curve tab at the top of the page here. So go ahead and click on that curve. And then we're also going to click on analysis. Curve, analysis. And from here, you'll notice we now have our uh, profit and loss curve displayed on the analysis mode. So right now we're just analyzing profit and loss at expiration. Um, so as you hover your cursor along the line here, you'll notice we have this little uh, little box at the top, which will display uh, the price at which you're currently hovering your cursor and then your profit and loss at expiration, if that were to be the price. You could also see your theoretical profit and loss. We're not going to get too, too deep with the, uh, with the theoretical profit and loss here, but I could show you all how to make some adjustments to that if you were interested in seeing what your P&L Theo looked like. Um, so in order to make adjustments to the analysis mode here, what you need to do is select the analysis tab from the right sidebar menu. This will bring up, first of all, it shows your current, your positions that you're currently viewing. So right now we only, we only have this, uh, this potential order on Tesla queued up, but if we had more orders on Tesla that were already established, you can, you would see those here and you could actually check or uncheck the boxes to see what your profit and loss zones would look like on Tesla as a whole. If you were to add the, uh, add this iron condor in, in addition to, um, like if you had another spread on, you could see your P and L zones, uh, taking both of those into account. But in this instance, we just have this iron condor. And then if you're looking to evaluate this at a specific date, we do you do have the ability to do that. So let's say maybe if the price of Tesla goes unchanged and we are now all the way at, we'll go with uh, December 19th. You'll notice how the, uh, or here, let's go with p and Theo. Sorry about that, everybody. So you're able to evaluate us at a specific date and your P&L Theo will change as you hover your hover your cursor along the top of the screen here. You'll also notice in the a change in the upper right corner of your screen as well where this P&L Theo is displayed. You could also view this at a specific uh, specific price which you can use the Theo spot price for. So let's say, you know, Tesla traded up to 260, how would that affect my theoretical P&L? Type that in. Go ahead and hit enter and you can see our P&L Theo in the upper right corner of it is, is affected. You can also adjust um, IV or implied volatility, make adjustments there. And now everybody, I know this was just a brief, a brief uh, description of the analysis mode, but Christian actually did a great, great video uh, that goes in depth on how to use the analysis mode and uh, all the different ways you can make adjustments to it. Uh, once again, that is on our YouTube channel. Uh, that's our analysis mode video. It's about 10 minutes long, but it, it's well well worth it if you're someone who's interested in learning more about this about this mode. So if they haven't done so already, I'm sure Christian, uh, Mark, or David can go ahead and drop a link to that video in the chat if you're curious. AJ, how are you zooming in and out on the? So I have a uh, I have a scroll wheel on my mouse that I could use to zoom in and out just like that. Um, you can also adjust the scale so it fits your screen a little bit better. Um, that will that will be another way to do it. Um, if you collapse this right sidebar menu, you kind of get more real estate. I'm operating on kind of a small screen right now, so if you're someone with a with a large with more screen room, this thing's going to show a lot a lot cleaner. Um, but if you're on a smaller screen like I am, you may want to just collapse this right sidebar menu and you kind of get a little bit of a better view there. Um, and then if you're looking to actually adjust the, the strikes of the options that you have queued up, you can left click and hold and then drag them. So you'll notice I'm dragging the uh, long call here from 262 and a half. We'll go ahead and grab that all the way to 270 and you'll see how the PL zones change when I click and drag that. So that's a quick way of doing it all from the curve mode. And then, um, yes, to Christian's point, there's also a magnifying glass in the upper right corner, which you could use to zoom in and out of the um, of the analysis analysis mode here. Okay. If there were more than taking a look at your question here, Nick, if there were more than one for Apple and each trade. How would you find that each trades P&L? So in this case, uh, Nick, if you're looking to see track the P&L for specific trades, um, that's actually going to be on our history tab here. So you can use that to track the P&L for specific roles. If you 
wanted to access that. That's going to be this uh, circle or this clock looking icon in the bottom left corner here. Go ahead and click on that. This will pull up our history tab um, from here. So if you're looking to track the PL for a specific trade, all you need to do is left click on the opening transaction and then also the closing transaction. So in this case with Apple, we went ahead and we'll go ahead and refresh this right here. We started with the, what do we start with? The 202 and a half uh, for December 22nd and the 205 long call. So you'll notice we left click on both of those. In the upper right corner now we see uh, $23 positive. So that indicates we brought in a 23 cent credit. And then we proceeded to close those two. So we'll go ahead and click on the closing transaction where we bought, so we bought to close the 202 and a half call and sold to close the 205 call for December 22nd. PL on that trade, uh, open and close is going to be $3. Now, obviously we rolled that trade. So if you're looking to track um, track what the roll's looking like after after the fact, you are going to want to use the order chains. But if you if you just want to see it for one specific part of the um, roll, if, you've, if you're someone who's rolled multiple times, you want to see the PL for a specific transaction, you could go ahead and come to the history tab and do it this way. But ultimately, everybody, I mean, if you are somebody who's rolling, um, I, I do want to stress, like, if you're somebody who, who's rolling a lot, you do want to use the order chain. I mean, that's going to be the best best feature um, to track your total P&L across all these ro rolls. Uh, but when it comes to, like, if you're if you're not rolling a position, um, you just want to see the P&L for a specific transaction, history tab comes, in, it comes into play. This is another great feature, but if you're somebody who rolls, stick to that order chains tab. That's going to be the best way. Any specific questions? I do believe we had a question about um, futures trading. So we can actually get into that a little bit right now. Actually, no, we're going to pivot here back to the back to the charts really quick. We'll touch on futures trading more later, though. Don't worry. If I forget somebody, just just uh, drop a message in the chat there and we'll, we'll definitely cover that. So for the charts, um, if you're someone who uh, is interested in charting, we offer many, many different great uh, features drawing tools, indicators, those can all be quickly added from the top of the chart tab here. You'll notice uh, with the indicators tab, if there's a specific indicator that you're you're looking for, um, let's go ahead and go with, uh, uh, let's see, we'll go with, what do you guys wanna see here? Anything, any any specific indicators you guys like to use? No, so we'll go with uh, go ahead and go with SMA here. So you go ahead and type it in at the top here, and then once you find that indicator from the tab, you go ahead and double left click. That will add the SMA indicator I just added to the uh, chart here on Tesla. And you can actually adjust the uh, you can you can adjust the uh, indicator itself from here. So right now we have it at a length of um, nine. Let's say maybe you wanted to adjust that to. 200 and you'll notice now you have a 200 day SMA line that's displayed there. If you want to make the uh, line thicker or adjust the color to it, you once again, go to the indicators tab at the top in the style here, we're going to go ahead and adjust the width. We'll set it at a three, just so it's easier for everybody to see. And then the color will go ahead and change that to uh, yellow. And just like that, you could change the style. If you're looking to remove indicators from the chart, you can do that simply by uh, going into the indicators tab, clicking the X here, and that will boom, go ahead and remove the indicator for you. Now we do also offer great drawing tools. So to access those drawing tools, you're going to come up to the top of the page here where we have our drop-down menu. Go ahead and click on that drop-down menu. From here, if you're looking to, maybe you're interested in like a gain loss line over a certain period of time, see what the uh, percent up or percent down move was during that specific period of time. If you go ahead and left click on the chart to start the line, and then we will go ahead and left click then to end it. You'll notice um, from this time period of about, well, we have the one minute, one day. Um, so from about 11.50 this morning to about 12.45, uh, this afternoon, there was about a one or uh, one point two six percent down move here in Tesla. 
Again, if you're looking to adjust the color on this to make it a little bit easier to see, what you can do is go ahead and uh, double left click on the uh, tool it or on the on the drawing itself, and this will bring up a little style box here. You could go ahead and adjust that color. We'll go ahead and make this one red, and then we'll also adjust the width so it's a little bit easier to see. And then once you're looking to remove that tool from the screen, uh, what you can do is right click on it and then choose remove drawing. And that will remove any drawing that you that you've clicked on and selected. Any other questions on the charts before we move along here to the uh, research tab? And again, I see a lot of people uh, asking about the different indicators we offer. We do offer many, many different indicators. Actually, we are working on putting out a whole um, indicator library of everything we offer that will be in the that will be coming down the road here in the next few months. Um, but we do have a we do have a ton of them. So chances are, if you're using it, we probably have it. Um, you just have to use this search box to search for it. All right, so moving on here, let's go to the, uh, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the news and research tab. So if you're someone who um, wants to see any of the recent news on, on a specific underlying, we have all of that easy, easily accessible to you here on the platform. So once again, we'll pivot back to Apple. Go ahead and type that in the symbol search box. Our news and research tab is going to be located right here. This is going to be our news and research tab. So if you're interested on any of the recent news about Apple, you go ahead and select this tab. This will bring up our news page. From here, you, we have a ton of different articles, which you can click on to uh, access and read that article right here. You're also, to see, you're also able to see um, any financials regarding Apple, ratios, um, analyst forecasts, things along those lines. That's all access accessible to you in our research and news tab um, this is a great great feature if you're you're someone who uh we're going to do more research about an underlying before you potentially trade it um steve okay how did how does one import watch list from another broker so actually if you're looking to import watch list going to direct you once again to our great great uh help center link that we have on on the platform here once again with this uh question mark icon. If you go ahead and click on that, this will bring you back to our help center. And if you go ahead and click on import or type in import and exporting a watch list, this will go through how you can import and export watch list on the Tasty Trade platform. So again, I mean, when when I tell you that that is a really, really useful feature, I sincerely mean it. I mean, we, we have a ton of help center articles. Chances are you'll be able to find an answer to uh, whatever your question may be just by visiting that help center. But if not, and you did, it's qu quicker for you to just give us a call here. We do have great support. So we we would highly suggest also giving us a call here on the, on the desk and we'll be more than happy to answer your question. Uh, Ron, light mode. Yes, I believe you answered, you asked this earlier. So if you're looking to access light mode, what you can do is click on any of the gear icons that you see on your platform here. In this case, uh, we have this one conveniently on the left side of our screen. So we'll go ahead and click on that. This will bring up our settings menu. Now, if you're looking to change to light mode, you need to click on general. And then on the bottom right corner of your screen, we have the use light color theme. I'm not going to check it because just because it is kind of a shock when you change from dark to light mode. But if you were to click this box, um, you do have we do have a light mode. And then the platform would then be displayed in all white as opposed to uh, this darker mode here. Any other questions just before we get into, uh, I want to go over um, trading on charts specifically. I know we touched on it briefly, how you can edit orders, but you can actually queue them up from a chart as well through our grid mode. Uh, but does anyone have anything specific before we get into that? Terry, can you show a Keltner chat? So we do have a Keltner channel displayed here on the chart. So if you go indicators, Keltner channels, and boom, just like that, you now have the Keltner channel displayed. Now I will say, um, if you're looking to, right now, these are uh, the indicators superimposed, but if you're looking to unimpose it, 
what you can do is at the top of the platform where you have the where you have the uh, name of the indicator displayed, if you put your cursor on the name, you'll notice it turns from like a light blue to a to a yellow color. So, and then if you left click and hold and drag this down, you're actually able to drag that indicator down into a subgraph if you prefer viewing it in a subgraph. And then you can make adjustments to the size of the subgraph by uh, there's a thin, thin uh, gray line between the two graphs. If you left click and hold to drag that down, you'll notice the subgraph now gets smaller. You can make adjustments uh, all based off of your own preference. But it, once again, if you're looking to superimpose this once again, you left click and hold, drag back up, and that will superimpose the indicator on the graph. Robert, how do you save a specific chart? So what you're going to do is, uh, and I won't get too deep into this, but basically what you do is click this, click this save button in the upper right corner of your screen. This will bring up a file that you can save to your uh, computer. And then uh, whenever you want to import that back into, into a chart on the platform, all you do is hit the load button and then you'll have access to uh, selecting that file from your, from your uh, computer's downloads. Once again, uh, that's all this, that's all covered in our help center. Um, so if you wanted to save chart, save export, import chart settings, we have a whole article on that, that covers that. So once again, I really am stressing this help center. It's very, very helpful. All right, everybody. And now I want to get into how to actually place, uh, how to actually place some some orders on a chart here. This is probably going to be the last thing I want to touch on at least, and then we'll open it up to a to a Q and A for the la about the last ten minutes here of the demo. Um, and I'll answer any any questions that you guys have about the platform. If there's anything you want to see again, we could go back and take a look at it. Um, so we'll go ahead and once again in our trade tab. If you go to the uh, mode here at the top, it's going to be grid. We're going to our grid mode. And you'll notice now this will bring up a chart of uh, the symbol that we have selected. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, how I mentioned earlier, what, whatever's in your active symbol, that will display across the platform. You'll notice grid mode actually has its own search bar. So if you wanted something else, like we'll go ahead and pull Tesla back up, go ahead and search that. Now you'll notice we have Tesla displayed here on grid mode. Um, on grid mode, you also have access to all the indicators, uh, drawing tools, all those things. That, that's all accessible on grid mode as well. But if you're looking to queue up and start an order here from grid mode, all you need to do is take, if you're looking to do it directly from the chart, if you right click on the chart and then click start limit order, this is going to get you started up here for a limit order. Now you'll notice with my crosshairs, I have a little, it says LMT and there's a price next to it. That means that wherever I click, that wherever I left click now, it's going to start up a limit order. You'll see that in the bottom portion of the screen. So let's go ahead and we'll we'll put something that's way, way out of range right now. If we go at, uh, at 280, we'll left click up here. You'll notice now at the bottom of your screen, let's see, do I have a... So you'll notice, er, let's go, actually we'll go something lower. So I just left click on, two tw on 223. You'll notice that now sets the limit price in the bottom uh, box here. So again, uh, right click, hit start limit order. And then any price you're looking to submit that limit order at uh, from the chart, you just left click on that price, 22, uh, 220.77. You'll notice that populates in the, the limit price box in the bottom of your screen. At this point, all you need to do is hit review, send, and you'll notice Boom, now we have that working order once again. And from here, you can also make adjustments to that working order, um, just as I showed you all earlier, but we'll touch on it one more time. You left click on the yellow box. It'll, highlight, it'll highlight in a bright yellow. And then at that point, you just left click and hold to drag the order up and down. We'll go ahead and drag it up here, 255. And boom, there you go. You notice we got filled there on our Tesla share. Uh, Juan, how do you do a bracket order? Good question. So uh, with the bracket orders, as of right now, you cannot place bracket orders on the charts. Uh, you can make adjustments to the, them, however, from the chart. Uh, but as far as placing it goes, you need to do that. From, you can do that from the positions tab on an order that you've already filled. So we'll go hop over to the positions tab here. We'll find Tesla. We have our one share. Left click on that share. 
right click and you'll notice we're not going to click close. If you wanted to just do a stop order, you would click close position. So I'll go through that briefly, click close position. Um, we'll go back to the table mode. And then what you need to do to set up a stop order is adjust the order type in the bottom right corner here where it says limit. We're going to dr click that drop down. Um, there's four choices here. It looks like Zoom's cutting off the last one, but it says market limit, stop market, and stop limit. So if you want to do a stop market order, you choose that from the menu and you set your prices like that. But let's say you wanted to do a bracket order. So you go back to the positions tab, right click on the share and choose bracket. You'll notice now this brings up your bracket order window. From here, we have three boxes on your screen. The one on the left, you can ignore. That's your order entry. So that's the order that's already filled. There's no adjustments that need to be made there. That's a filled order already. What you'll be focusing on are the two boxes on the right, the close at profit and stop loss. So if you're looking to adjust the close limit price, we'll go ahead and go to 70. And then um, stop trigger, we'll bump that down to, let's say, 242. Once we're satisfied with this order, um, we'll go ahead and hit review and send, fire the order off. And then just like that, boom, all from the position screen, we were able to set up a bracket order on there. And you'll notice we have the two, two working orders um, that are also displayed there. And to my point earlier about how you can't place the uh, bracket order on a chart, you can edit it. So if we go ahead and pop open our charts one more time here, you'll notice now we have the, oh, looks like I have to adjust the Y axis once more. Sorry, everybody. Set that take profit order kind of far away. Um, so uh, we have our working orders here on the charts. If you're looking to bump or adjust them in any way, left click, hold, drag, and you'll notice, boom, we just canceled, replaced that one. That's our take profit uh, we, that we just made an adjustment to. So with the, uh, with the bracket orders, you are able to edit them from a chart once they are in there working. Uh, Terry, can you do options this way? So with the uh, with the options on or the bracket orders on options, um, when it comes, if you're placing them on spreads, no, because you can't get a, a chart of the spread. But if it's on an individual leg, yes, you are able to adjust uh, working bracket orders on individual legs of options. Uh, you would have to access the options chart for that. Now, in order to access the options chart, I'll show you all that here quickly. Uh, you go to the trade tab and you'll go to table mode. From table mode, what you need to do is right click on the on the strike price if you're looking to view that that chart for that specific option. So in this case, we're trying to take a look here at the 240 strike put here on Tesla. We'll right click. We get an option that says view option in chart. Click on that, and you'll notice now we have the uh, we have a chart of that option pricing, um, and you can adjust the you can adjust the uh, time interval and aggregation here at the top of the screen. Don't believe I mentioned that earlier, but this works the same way with with all other charts. You do have the ability to adjust the uh, interval and aggregation at the top of the screen. Um, you could go with like a five minute, five day chart. That's all adjustable to from the top of your screen. And it's the same exact thing in the normal chart tab as well. But um, any questions before we go ahead and wrap things up here? Um, anything specific? Anything I kind of went went uh, too quickly over that you guys want me to touch on again? Oh, futures. Yes, yes. Yep. Thank you for reminding me. See, I told you I would forget. Uh, so futures. If you're looking to trade um, futures, so for example, let's say um, we'll go with MES. Micro E-mini. Go ahead and type that in the top of your screen there. We'll go to the trade tab. Now with MES or ES or any futures in, in general, um, if you're looking to place an order on the futures contract itself, um, you're going to, so you're not going to be concerned with what's in the middle of your screen here. These are all the options for the futures. So similar to, to stock, if you're looking to place an order on the outright futures themselves, all you're doing is clicking on the bid or the ask at the top of the screen. So if you're looking to go long, we'll go ahead and click on the ask price. You'll notice now at the bottom of our screen, we have an order queued up to buy uh, one MES contract. We'll go ahead and do that at market, review and send, send the order. 
and boom, just like that, you'll notice we were filled there on our futures trade. Uh, one and yes, yeah, so one, we we just covered the grid mode. Um, if we have any new questions, I'd like to get to those first. But if you uh, if you have if you're curious about the grid mode, I'll try to touch on it before I let everybody go. Uh, but if you have uh, more questions about the grid mode, again, I suggest accessing this uh, accessing our help center. Which if you have the platform open, just click on this uh, question mark icon. That'll take you there. Type in grid mode. We have a great great article on there. Um, and then curve curve mode as well. Yes. So uh, that we did touch on that briefly um, earlier. If you're interested about that, go ahead and type type it in in the help center, or uh, I direct you to our YouTube channel where Christian did a great great video on that analysis and curve mode. It's about ten minutes long, but it tells you everything you need to know. Okay, so um, if you're looking to manage that uh, that long contract, once again, it's similar to every um, the options and uh, stock trades we placed earlier. You could just go to your positions tab. You'll notice we have MES here at the top. If you're looking to close it out, right click, click close position, market, review and send, and boom, just like that, the order filled. And now what, what, when it comes to the positions tab, if you're somebody who's trading uh, trading futures or even just uh, options in general, uh, it's very important, in my opinion at least, that you have all of these filters selected at the top of the screen because a lot of times uh, we'll get a lot of calls here on the desk like people, people reaching out to us, hey, I can't see my position on my positions tab. Where is it at? Well, if you're somebody who's trading futures, you'll definitely want to have this futures uh, filter selected because if it's not selected, any futures positions you hold will not be there. Now, we just closed out that MES position, so it's not there anymore. Um, but if you're uh, the options one, for example, we have some options open. If it's unselected, you'll notice Apple disappears. Um, and then even if you're someone who doesn't trade stock and you're primarily trading options, I would still keep the stocks filter open uh, just because assignment, exercise, things along those lines where you uh, take the delivery of, uh, of shares of stock. If you were to ever get assigned or an option to get exercised, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the the shares that you now own or have sold um, if your stocks filter is not selected. So you'll definitely want to keep all of those selected at the top of your page there. It's possible to buy a call in order to Stock price for, okay, uh, good question. Is it possible to buy a call limit order triggered based on the stock price rather than the option price? Um, that would require a conditional order. As of right now, we don't offer conditional orders, but we are getting very, very close to offering them. So I would I would be on the lookout for that within the first few months of 2024. Um, once we offer those conditional orders, that should be something that you'll you'll be able to do. As of right now, you cannot. And then also uh, trailing stop loss orders. That's another popular question we get. Those are coming very soon too. All right, everybody. It seems like we're winding down a bit here. So I did just want to touch on one more thing before I let you all go. Um, again, referring back to our help center. If you go ahead and click this button, we do have a contact us page. So if you go ahead and type in contact information, this has all of our contact info. Um, so as the number to call, uh, one, if you extension one is going to be for our trade desk, two is for our general support and three is for our tech support. Um, everybody here on the desk and in, in, in the tech support uh, queue, they're all great, all, all phenomenal at what they do. Um, the really cool thing about it is like, if you call us here on the desk, the ones who are going to be speaking to you would be like myself, Mark, Christian, or, or David. So we are the ones who will be answering your questions, uh, which if you ask me, that's pretty cool. We're, we're very, very hands-on with our help um, and how to navigate the platform and whatnot. But all of our contact information is displayed here. Um, we have all of our emails displayed here as well. Now there's one that's not displayed. If you're someone who's trading futures, we do offer overnight support for futures. That email is going to be futures at tastytrade.com. So if you ever have anything that's urgent um, in regard to like a futures futures trade, our uh, chat and 
phone support lines are only open until 5 p.m. Central, Monday through Thursday and 4 p.m. Central on Fridays. Um, but if you're looking to contact us outside of business hours and it's urgent, especially in regard to a uh, futures trade, I highly suggest emailing us at futures at tastytrade.com. That inbox is monitored 24-7, so you will get a will get a very, very quick response. Okay, please cover. Okay, so we are running a little bit out of time here in regard to those, those stop losses on futures trading. I'm sorry I didn't really get too deep into it. Um, we do have a whole futures demo that's posted on our YouTube channel. Again, if the link hasn't been put in the chat yet, I'm sure one of the guys can can go ahead and do so. On our, on our uh, YouTube page, we have a whole 30 to 45 minute long demo strictly dedicated to futures, all the different modes. So we'll go, we go in depth on our, uh, uh, active trader mode as well, which I, unfortunately I didn't get to today, but that's another great one. If you're someone who's actively trading futures, um, that's all covered in depth, stop orders on those futures, all covered in depth on there, as well as again, on our help center, we have those, the link to how to set up a stop order here. This will, this covers pretty much everything you need to know. Um, another great video as well. Juan, the email for futures is futures at tastytrade.com. All right, everybody. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up a little, uh, wrap this one up here. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Uh, Christian, David, Mark, thank you again for helping on the chats. And uh, just to cover one more, uh, again, I'd like to reiterate everything that you saw here today was for example purposes only. None of it should be treated as trading advice. Again, everything is for example purposes only. If you have any questions for um, Anybody here on the desk, feel free to give us a call, reach out to us via email or anything specific for like myself, Christian, David, or Mark, feel free to go ahead and send us an email, support at tastytrade.com. Just put it to our attention and we'll do our best to get, a, get an answer back to you as soon as we can.